Hey man, Christian Benner. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little little rundown of the shop, which is kind of just like my brain vomiting. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. Um, as far as it's it's funny now because now that I've gotten so heavy into collecting records, like this this my personal clothing store is turning into like a record store. And I actually just added this shelf up here. So this is all my Japanese collection. Um, which I probably shouldn't have so close to the door. But this is my, these are my babies. So I'm in love with Japanese pressings. Um, I mean, you know the deal. These things just come with so much more. They're so much cool with the obi and, you know, they're, they're just pieces of art. Um, I'll show you probably one of my holy grails in the collection. Is, uh, oh, that one's killer, yeah. The half speed master version. Um, I paid a little too much for this one, <laughs> but it's just like you're in the room. Yeah. And then moving over on this side, I kind of, I, I, I'm really OCD about filling every space I possibly can. So I kind of, I, I change this wall up every few months just to kind of showcase different things, different like important things to me um surprisingly out of all of the cool stuff i mean from you know steven's harmonica you know the guns and roses get closer to that harmonica wow he finished the show the show and just like chucked it to me off on side stage i was just like i, I thought he was like my sister go out and play it <laughs> but the most important thing on here is this, this drawing of garbama that is actually painted with blood. Wow. So long story short about that piece, um, when Greg was finishing his last record, Southern Blood, he, Greg's been sick for a while, and I, I befriended his daughter, uh, Layla. She goes by Brooklyn, but her real name is Layla. And he went into the studio, started recording, and then went on tour. So in between tour, he would go back in, he finished the record, as far as all the rough mixes. All of a sudden, Jess, like overnight, just got really sick. They flew him to Macon, Georgia, <clears throat> in the hospital and passed away within three days. Oh. So they were sitting there with the record and nobody wanted anything to do with it. The label said, we're not putting this out. It's not engine, it's not mixed. The estate said, we're not putting the money out for this record. All of a sudden, Cher, obviously, which they were married and had a baby, comes out of nowhere and said, this record's coming out. So I sat down with his daughter, Layla, and said, what do we do with this record? She goes, well, a couple years ago, I introduced Dad to this artist. Um, he was based in New York. He lives in LA now, but he's based in New York, and he does painting with blood. And at the time, she showed her father his work, and they took some vials of blood, and he kept it eventually to do a piece. So she called the artist and said, you know, do you still have that blood? He's like, yeah, man, I, you know, I have it. He's like, well, we're printing Dad's album out. We're going to call it Southern Blood. I want you to paint a portrait of him with the blood. And that's what that came from. Is that the actual... Is that's, that... that's a litho. That's, they did, okay. for friends and family, they printed a few of them. Wow. That's killer. Sweet. So is this your Harley? This is my Harley that I don't ride. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, you can't ride motorcycles in New York City. You can't go... 30 miles per hour. It's just like wants to go fast. <laughs> so I wouldn't even dare. I'm looking, I'm in the market for like a little cruiser. Oh yeah. Uh, coming over here is just kind of a little shrine to just, you know, some obviously classics. This collage of photographs is by um, a photographer named Gene Kirkland, a buddy of mine out in LA who works with Motley Crue, Anthrax, and a couple of other metal bands came across one of these photos somewhere and found out who this guy Gene Kirkland was and got in touch with him. So this dude named Gene, Gene is God, this old, grumpy, just mean dude. And he was just this amazing photographer. Never made a career out of it, just this amazing photographer at the time. And he said, you know, your, your work is insane. You yeah. know? And it took him about a year to convince him to let him go to his house went to his house and this guy just had 
piles and piles of negatives. He had sheets where like Axel would circle his headshot for promo. And <laughs> I mean, and then finally they printed them all and did an art show. And then these are three of them from the art show. Cool. Um, moving forward, just some artwork that I've collected over the years. Um, obviously my favorite Sabbath album. Yeah. This was from the Guns N' Roses show at the Apollo they did. Uh, gosh, did I have a date on it? About two years ago, I think it was. Yeah, 2017. 17, yeah. This is one of my favorite pieces. Check this thing out. It's a mirror, obviously. So this artist printed out this picture of Mick and took a hole puncher. Right. Hole punched it and then glued every single piece. Wow. Could you imagine the no. patience on that thing? Yeah. <laughs> um, over here, this is just like stuff where you could probably spend 20 minutes looking at it. Um, it's his Christmas ca card from uh, Keith Richards. No big deal. The weirdest thing ever, I, I need to find like a British dude. He always says gold rings on you. And that's what he wrote here, gold rings on you. Well, that sounds good. Like, this is the, the uh, presents. The object. Jimmy Page gave him this. <laughs> Out of his personal stash. That's a joke. Um, obviously a picture. This was actually painted by Ronnie Wood. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it, weird fact. Ronnie Wood is like this incredible artist. Huh. Um, he paint, he, most of his work, he paints wild horses. Hmm. Go figure. <laughs> um, from Greg. A little tribute to Zeppelin. This was the last ticket um, before John Bonham died. Yeah. What's up with this guitar? This guitar was something I was working on um, when I started getting into customizing guitars, which I'll show you some more later. But yeah. I was painting this guitar with the white words on it. So then I took other paint to try to paint over it, and it clearly didn't work. I saw <laughs> there was an exhibit in uh, Seattle with Kurt Cobain, and they yeah. took his guitar that was smashed and put it back together. Yeah. Like, just pieces, you know. So I took this thing in the back, and just First swing, bounces right back up. Oh. <laughs> Not as easy as you think. Yeah. Granted, this is like a cheap, like a $300 guitar made yeah. out of like particle bit or wood. I, I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> so I eventually broke it, took all the pieces back together, just nailed it up there. Yeah. And what more better of a photo than yeah. the classic Mick Rock photo. Yeah, knocking it out. So everything uh, seems like really intentional when you really think about it. Like you put that with that. I didn't course. even make that connection to just now. It's Robert Plant. Yeah, these are people that have come in over the years. Yeah, Auto, autos. Aerosmith. Man, that's so cool. Jet. Ever Jet? You ever get into Jet? Oh yeah, freaking love Jet. Back David in the Byrne. Candle box. Man. And then, tell them about this guitar, man. So this is uh, this is Les Paul. This is uh, Slash is Les Paul, surprisingly. Um, oh my gosh! So this is a '59 replica, a custom shop from Les Paul or from Gibson themselves to all of Slash's uh, specs. So obviously, working with guns for gosh, the tour was four years. I started asking Slash. His guitar like section on stage is probably the size of like a decent bedroom and there's he travels with about 30 less balls yeah. so i said to him, I said, why, why do you travel with so many guitars and he was like so excited to answer the question he's like well and he picks up like i don't know just a random one and he goes well this one here i did i, I played sweet child of mine on a, on the album yeah this one i did you know november rain you know he just kept each guitar was for each song he changed his guitar for every song so he's also got backups too. And this is one of his backups. And I was kind of like kidding. Um, and I said, Slash, well, this one you don't seem to play. What, what's the deal? And he's <laughs> like, it's yours. <laughs> the thing is, but the thing is, I had to like walk around all night in my hand. Oh, like, poor you. Know, you. <laughs> it was it was like, but like, you know, I was backstage carrying it. And then like I had to get in a cab and everyone was like looking at me like I stole Did it. you steal this guitar from Slash? Yeah. Did you steal this guitar? Oh, man. So let's... uh. Let's, while you're over here, just tell me about these records. What do you got? Where does it, you know, any, so, any order to it? This is my 90s to current section. Um, this is my, like, heart of my 90s stuff from Radiohead 
to like Oasis, U2, later U2, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Pixies, like all that kind of stuff. Then it kind of trickles into like newer bands that I'm not necessarily too familiar with, um, which is more over here, which, um, or more recommendation. Hey, check this band out, so I'll, I'll pick it up. And stuff along those, cause just because it's right here, because I sit on the couch so much. And I learned this from you. This is my shelf that I have not listened to yet. Yeah. I cannot put a record away until I listen to it. Yeah. I just, I just can't do it. So that's what that shelf is. And it's, it's ever growing. And it's funny because my OCD, I can't listen to anything else until I like put a dent into that <laughs> section. Uh, Sonic Youth when they came in. Um, I love, you ever check this out? Yes, that's like, killer. Yeah, those guys are great. Blackberry Smoke, Southern Man. Incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Incredible. They are. Unfortunately, this is hidden, but this is Little John. He's yeah. a trip. Yeah. He came in and he got a jacket. Yeah. I had to, I actually, like, I went on a hunt to find a Little John record. What you got going on here, it's obviously beautiful. So this has been an ongoing thing um, over the years of just upgrading, upgrading, upgrading yeah. until I finally found the right system. So starting off with the turntable, which is probably the newest out of the batch. Actually, the needle's the newest, I just got it the other day. But this is a music hall. Um, music hall is a brand they're based out of Colorado, I want to say, by a guy named Roy Hall. And Roy Hall is this like genius German guy, but probably like the meanest, most angry man in the world. <laughs> but that dude knows what he's doing. Yeah. So this thing, I've been searching for the right table. I was going to go Macintosh to match, but I'll get to this in a second, to match the amp. But having a store constantly walking by or bumping in, I, I hear vibrations. Yeah. So I found this thing, and it's got a triple plinth. So it's literally three platters. So in between wow. each platter is rubber. Yeah. We're so sure. you can literally bang onto this thing, and it won't even affect the play. Wow. Um, belt driven. And then I just added the Ortofone 2M Black, which is it's decent. Um, I've learned the more expensive the needle, the more it picks up. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's like the tiniest little speck on there, you hear it. Um, good investment, but I mean, you know, obviously needles are very important, but right. like, that's where you, that's where you decide. Yeah. Um, this is my Macintosh integrated amp, which just powers everything. Um, what's cool with Macintosh, it's all in one. And it's funny, when I first bought this piece, I didn't really know much about audio equipment. I just knew I, this was like my dream piece. Yeah. And I got this guy, and I set it up, and I'm kind of like tinkering around, I'm hitting buttons, and you know, I'm looking, and I just see like there's a couple, of, there's like, you know, input, output, source, whatever. So I put it on phone, and I start playing, and biggest thing is we we all do is we look for the equalizer. Yeah. You, know, you kind of want to mess around with it, and I'm like, Where, where's the equalizer? Call Macintosh. Hey man, I just bought you know this, this amplifier. Where's the equalizer? A guy just started laughing, like like chuckling. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, you yeah. know? Like I'm sorry. He goes, there is no equalizer. And I was like, what does that mean? Cool thing with this thing, what you do is when you put a record on, this reads the frequency that the record was mastered at and automatically sets itself to what the levels are supposed to be. Yeah. So it plays back exactly the way it's supposed to yeah. be. Which is great because yeah. you could spend hours on trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, and the speakers. Speakers, these are definitive technology. I bought these. Um, my father growing up had the exact same speakers in the 90s. Yeah. And these, they were, they were a little bit bigger. You walked near those things and you touched them, you were going to know about it. Like that's how hardcore my dad was. Yeah. So they just released, um, they redid them and put these out last year. So yeah. this is the modern version of what my father had, and it's kind of like a wow. tribute to my dad. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, it's, they're called bipolar. Um, not because my personality. <laughs> so what it, bipolar means, it's coming out of three sides. So up here you have your tweeters. Wow. Here you have your mids, and then down here you have your subs. So cool. it's three in one, and it's coming out of all three sides. Wow. Um, the way we have it set up with the stereo record, I'm sorry, um, yeah. you know, you're sitting in the middle, you're getting both. Right. And it's kind of hitting you in the center. 
Yeah, I sat in this chair while we listened to Led Zeppelin II MoFi copy, and it was uh, it was quite the experience. It's something I'm still learning about. Um, a friend of mine who works at a recording studio sat me down, and he goes, "What do you know about coloring?" I was a guy who colored all the time as a kid. He goes, <laughs> "So it's like it's a it's like the the term they use." Yeah. And he goes, "Sit down right there." And he puts on a record, and he's positioning the record. He goes, "Close your eyes." And he put on a record. I, I don't know which record it was. And he goes, "Where's the drum?" I was like, "Right there." Was, okay, where's the bass? I go, "The bass sounds kind of like right here." Where's the singer? It's over there. And I literally, the way it's set up between a stereo recording is you can hear where everything's coming from. And then the coolest part is when it, it goes from one speaker to the other. You, it feels like it's like floating through yeah. the air. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about this. What's this? I've, I've, I've meant to ask you. I don't even know. So this was a piece Keith done Richards by um, Michael Hilfiger, who is Tommy Hilfiger's brother. Oh. Um, this was a gift for when I opened the shop. This has been the toughest piece of art I've had in my shop. I used to have, wear those same red glasses, and everybody thought it was me. Yeah. And I, it's... It, I was, Really? Like, you think I would have a photo of myself above myself? You know what I mean? Like, so that was like the... It's Keith Richards, right? It's Keith Richards. Okay. I get Jim Morrison a lot. Huh. But um, it's all found what he found on the street. He built a light box. So behind wow. it is two neon lights that's lit up. It's like, it's literally my favorite image of Keith. It's, it's, you know, it's so yeah. iconic. Yeah. So um, over here, let's, let's, let's come back over here um, to this... this, this Awesome section here you got. Um, this is the best one in the house. Um, I mean, obviously, just albums that I that have grown up with. I really just wanted to showcase. Yeah. This was this Maiden set that I cl I've been collecting. Um, I'm missing three of them. They're just impossible to find. I yeah. found one in a used bin. Wow. And then if you're gonna tell me there's like a limited edition set of eight, I gotta find the rest of them. Right. Right. So. The way this is set up, this is all my classic rock down to blue. So blue starting at the bottom going up. Um, I organize my stuff for accessibility um, as opposed to any like alphabetical order, any of that stuff. So like up here is my favorite. You know, we got Zeppelin, ACDC, Bowie, Who, Floyd, T-Rex, Stones, Beatles, Hendrix, Aerosmith, and then the rest kind of trickles out. I mean, like Neil Young and Allman Brothers. So this is like my reachable section yeah. that I just go to. And then the rest trickles down. I'm going to eventually get into more organization. I mean, this is the ever-ending question. What genre is this band in? Right. You know, like I have some psych stuff there, but it could be there. But it's, I know where it is relatively. Yeah. And okay. then. You got these guitars. So um, these are the D'Angelico. Yeah, D'Angelico is a New York brand. Um, D'Angelico himself was a luthier from the 1940s who made guitars. It used to be, I think it was like 47th Street. It was called Guitar Row. It was just all yeah. music shops. And D'Angelico handmade all of these guitars. This neck is actually modeled after, um, this is supposed to be the Empire State Building. Oh, and cool. And it's supposed to be like for New York. Yeah. So, when he passed away, these guitars were just, like, cherished, and people were on the hunt for them. A couple years ago, the company went up for sale, and somebody bought it and started reproducing them again. So these are their prototypes that we have in here, that ones that just never went to market. Um, you know, obviously, they're, they're trying to do, you know, cutaways, single cutaways, you know, Gibson, yes series guitars this is the only solid body they ever made it never made it anywhere yeah prs you know just right decent guitar but they're fun you know they're really fun guitars that we did yeah up here is the fun stuff so i teamed up with this um this one guy and we just kind of designed these things you know since i'm working with artists i'm like we might as well give them instruments yeah and i mean we've lent them out the kravitz gaga has one on tour right now but we take parts of it and add Swarovski crystals, which are all hand placed. Wow. Actually, I'll show you this one. Yeah, that one must have taken a hot minute. <laughs> I mean, even from the Fender logo. Oh, yeah. Down to each 
individually hand placed Swarovski crystal. Yeah. Which obviously on stage is just. Oh yeah. You know you're gonna see it. Yeah, is that one Taylor Swift's? This is Taylor Swift's. <laughs> Um, my favorite part of the wall, which is the first thing you noticed, and no one ever notices this, is all these albums are white. Yep. Um, I didn't want to take away from the guitars, but I'm also, I get freaked out when I see negative space. Yeah. So I had to put something in frames, so I just decided to do all white albums. Yeah. Love this it. This one's pretty rad too, this Japanese rising sun. Yeah, it is, for sure. This is a little bit more me with the camo. I added some studs. Yeah. Wow. That's killer. So over here we have... So tell us about this box set. <laughs> this is the uh, 30th anniversary of Appetite for Destruction. Um, is it just like swing open? So the way... It's wild. So this is actually... It's all wrapped in leather and hand carved. And then it just opens like this. Oh, wow. And I don't even know where to begin with this thing. But, you know, we have... A book, images, um, I'll open one of them up. It's all the lithographs. They did a lithograph for every single song. Oh my gosh. So each one has a theme. These sold for what, a thousand dollars? A thousand, yeah. <laughs> so each one has, you know, this is for each song. Um, Shadow of Your Love, Night Train, um, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> that reminds cool. me of the Grateful Dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what these, all these folders are. Wow. It's Holy just Lord. individual artwork. And then... Here are all the singles they put out. Sweet. Over, you know, yeah. for promo. I think they're on red. Dang. Or yellow. Yeah. Red and yellow. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, the best part of this thing is obviously it comes with um, the actual album. Check out this foil cover. Man, that's killer. Yeah. Um, B sides. Um, a replica of, like we were saying earlier, Live Like a su Suicide, which originally goes for, you know, upwards, I mean, I've seen him for a thousand bucks. But this is so amazing. This is um, the Sound City sessions where they recorded at Sound City in Los Angeles. Yeah. So this is literally every song, they try to replicate, you know, but it's all demos. And they remastered it. It's unbelievable to hear how these songs, you know, became songs. Yeah. They took things out, they added things. So that's where the, this whole thing is. I think it's crazier. You know, it's like a jewelry case or something. <laughs> Rings. Oh my God. Um, kind of just like an emblem made out of sterling silver. <laughs> I didn't know about all this stuff. I wondered why it was so thick, but. This is the USB, oh. a 45 adapter. Now check this out. A lot of it took a lot of people like a few months to figure this part out, but back here is a replica of the original demo tape. Oh wow! So this is what they gave out. Wow! Does it, so does it as an actual demo tape? Yep. Oh wow! That is so sweet. Put some time into this thing, man. Yeah, they did. That's the coolest box set I think I've ever seen. They, it was up for a Grammy, and they lost to Weird Al Yankovic. He did it, all his studio albums in an accordion. That is kind of cool. What else but... we got here? <laughs> um, uh, lapel pins. Uh, silver guitar picks. Wow. These things are like two pounds each. And then just like 
pins, patches, um, and here's, I don't know if you noticed in those photos that per this was the first purple banner they used, their backdrop. Oh, cool. It says Guns N' Roses. Um, uh, some kind of cloth and a bandana. Sweet. But it's like this beautifully embroidered bandana. Yeah. That's cool. And then underneath is the metal section. So starting with Sabbath into Dio, or Sabbath into Ozzy into Dio, Alice Cooper Kiss, then it goes into 80s, 80s glam, continues down here, then we have Motley Crue. So this is, um, <laughs> when Motley Crue first came out, this was their first record. So when a lot of bands, I think still to this day, but especially in the 80s when bands were just everywhere on Sunset Strip, they were putting out demos, but they were put, making up record label names to make it sound like they're official. Mm -hmm. So when Crew came out with this record, or this demo, I should say, they called it Leather Records. Which says right here. Yeah. 1981 Leather Records. Yeah. So this is the original Leather Records recording. But the cool part about this one, they first pressing they put out, they pressed a thousand and sold out like that. Yeah. So then they did another pressing, which is this pressing. And they said, we could probably make a few bucks off this. So they found a distribution company called Greenwood. And this is the original contract between Greenwood and Motley Crue. So it's the licensing agreement from 1981. Wow. This is the photocopy of it. The other one's in a very safe spot. But I mean, Nikki Six. Mick Mars, Tommy Lee, Vince Neil. And this is what started their career. Yeah. From here to here is all Guns N' Roses. Starting with LA Guns, obviously. Right. Where, they, where it all began. This is the original first uh, test pressing of their demos from LA Guns. Uh, <laughs> Then it goes into the collaboration of Hollywood Rose. So this is where it all started. So the way it happened was Axel was playing around with LA, with, uh, LA guns and there was Tracy guns. So Axel Rose, Tracy guns, guns and roses. So this is the demos from that era. And then it just goes into, I mean, gosh, a million different. And well, these are the studio albums. Um, the ever so coveted Live Era, which is my personal favorite. Now, a little, little like little hist or tidbit on this one, not many people know about, but this is an official release. Um, I think it was Geffen. Hype sticker and all that stuff. Originally twenty nine bucks. And is that what you paid for it? Yeah, it's what I paid for it. <laughs> um, this only comes out every now and again. So they had a contract and they had to put one more record out. So they said, let's just compile a bunch of live stuff. So that's why it's called Live Hour 87 to 93. Now, I won't say who, but so many from Guns N' Roses was here and said there's a secret. It's one of the most impeccable sounding records I've ever heard so for a live recording. It sounds, it's crystal clear. And we're sitting here and I put it on. He's like, put it on. You know, he's like, I haven't heard that record in like 15 years. So I'll put it on. And he goes, can you tell a difference or anything different about the record? And I was like, no. He goes, you notice Axel's voice. I was like, what about it? He goes, he, re he re that, that says 87, 93. He redid the vocals in 99. He went into what? the studio and overdubbed the vocals. That's crazy. It's, I mean, the way they mixed it, you will never know. So, but it really is live? It's really live. Oh my gosh. But he redid the vocals. Did not know that. So, metal uh, soundtracks down here. I'm a huge, huge movie score person. And I collect a lot of horror movie stuff. So, I mean, classics, you know? Yeah. 
Night of, Night of the Living Dead. Now that we're in Halloween time, like these are all gonna be coming out. And then down here is like more modern, kind of uh, what we what they call stoner rock, doom metal. Um, skip this whole section. Industrial, Nine Inch Nails, White Zombie, Marilyn Manson, um, Typo Negative, that whole thing. Yeah. So, kind of covers all bases of metal. This is a probably a heavy, heavily frequent section in here. Yeah. When I work, I need to, my blood needs to be like going. So, this is Sanchez. That's the, that's the man. And Manchester, then back here, is, this is where the magic happens. We make everything here. Um, this is like where my ideas start. Um, these are my blank canvases of leather, obviously. From here onto the chain, and that's where they start with the paint. And the chain. The chain. And that's <laughs> where they start. And then we just kind of come up with our ideas. We look at it. I usually sit in this chair listening to a record and stare at this thing for 10 minutes. and try to come up with how I'm gonna tackle it first. Ooh. Cool. And then this is where I nap. Oh, Come that's on. your nap couch. That's my nap I see it, I can see it. Cool. All right. I think we covered everything.